Akira, a schoolboy, dates a yandere for a short while before breaking up with her when he learns that she suffers from dissociative identity disorder. Believing this is the end of the story, Akira faces the more vindictive and unforgiving side of his ex-girlfriend, who shows him the true meaning of pain, something he would carry for the rest of his life. Hi folks, I'm R, your narrator. If you are new here, I want to welcome you dearly to, 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 to what you're about to see and the numerous more videos that are to come. You can follow me on Twitter where you can send me video suggestions and in general, catch up with me. This video will contain spoilers. With that said, let's begin. Shinji and Akira, two good friends, talk about a girl Akira is dating whom he's not too sure about. He explains the girl called Psycho is overly attached and jealous, stalking him and being extremely clingy. He further explains the biggest reason for him considering to break up with her is that she suffers from a form of dissociative identity disorder, making her have mood swings. However, it's likely that her moods have become more stable after being with Akira. Shinji, being a snobby conceited boy, having high opinions of himself, consults Akira to break up with her and that she's too nerdy and clingy. Akira subsequently breaks up with Psycho, presumably dating other girls, which causes Psycho to become more obsessed and stalk Akira's every move, not moving on. Shinji, discovering that Psycho is still in love with Akira and stalks him in a psychotic level, plans to put a stop to it. He presumably approaches Psycho, treating her with a condescending attitude, trying to convince her to stop. But a determined Psycho is never going to let go of Akira and the possibility of being with him. Shinji, a good friend of Akira, believing he's doing Akira a favor, he discovers that Psycho has a secret diary, which he uses to draw Akira's portraits in alongside some other concerning scribbles. Shinji, having a twisted plan, steals Psycho's diary and rips some pages out of it, and spreads them all over the school, sticking them on the walls. His plans to humiliate Psycho works, causing her to be publicly shamed and isolated further, making her lonelier than before. Psycho is a schoolgirl who had a difficult, lonely life, being scrutinized by both her parents and her peers at school. This led to her developing a form of dissociative identity disorder, with her alter ego being more assertive and vindictive. Psycho, on the other hand, is compassionate and kind, yet confusing the lines between creepy obsession and love. In her miserable life, she finds a dreamy boy who becomes the highlight of her days. She falls over her feet for him and slowly gains more confidence with her alter ego becoming less of a problem compared to the past. Unfortunately, for a mentally tormented Psycho-chan, she doesn't understand the difference between love and obsession, driving Akira away. She presumes the culprit is his snobby friend Shinji, who she assumes conspired against her and convinced Akira to spread her sensitively personal diary publicly. Feeling betrayed yet loving Akira and holding a heavy grudge against Shinji, she has a severe breakdown with her alter ego almost fully taking over. After some time, when the time is right and school is empty, Psycho kidnaps Akira and locks him in the school. Shinji, unaware of the situation, gets lured into the school by Psycho, who lies to him and eventually drugs him, rendering him unconscious. The night then commences with Akira waking up in a room in the school, unsure to what is happening and how he got here. He realizes he's tied to a chair with his ex-girlfriend, Psycho, giving him a lecture. She explains how she always loved Akira and how she watched them sleep the whole time waiting for him to awaken. She further expands that she would never hurt her senpai, but that he would, if he would get provoked, seemingly addressing her alter ego. She further informs Akira that she would never let him leave as she loves him, 
when she starts reassuring herself in a denial yet soothing tone that she couldn't leave senpai so he would date other girls and keeps repeating that she can't allow it when suddenly losing her mind knowing that it's all out of her control her alter ego takes over known as her younger mode a vindictive murderer who playfully suggests if she should cut off akira's tongue mentioning that she missed senpai as it's been a while the alter ego then quickly displays the already bloodied knife suggesting she has already killed someone earlier mentioning that she also kidnapped shinji and that she will go quickly to cut his head off and return to Akira, her senpai. The bloodied knife with her attire splattered with blood and mentioning that she couldn't let Akira date other girls, it seems as if she killed a girl earlier, a girl that Akira was presumably interested in. In another room, Shinji finds himself tied to a bed within a pitch black room at the school with Psycho patiently waiting for him to wake up. Shinji, confused to what he's witnessing, observing a calm psycho wielding a knife with strange eyes glowing red, he tries to come out of his restraints when psycho moves close to him swiftly and begins sawing his head off. Psycho didn't have an excuse not to kill Shinji and had more reasons to even kill him for revenge, as she saw him as the major factor leading to Akira breaking up with her. Although unsure, she presumed Shinji had a hand in stealing her diary and spreading its pages, giving her more of a reason to enforce her justice. Akira, hearing Shinji's screams of agony, breaks out of his restraints and tries in panic to find a way out. As Akira traverses across the dark school, he realizes the main door is locked, forcing him to find the key. As he walks for a while, he realizes that Psycho is on his tail, not showing severe aggression to begin with, but watching him from the distance and giggling psychopathically as if she's enjoying this little hunt. Trying to reason with Psycho, she keeps repeating that she cannot let Akira go, saying that he belongs to her and following his every step. That's when he has enough and closes one of the doors at her face, trying to keep her out, when suddenly her eyes glow red, taking her sharp bloodied kitchen knife out and waving it in the air menacingly. That's when Akira realizes that Psycho is taken by her younger side, willing to kill him. After cutting Akira in several occasions as he tries to find the key, seeing Akira hurt, Psycho quickly shows compassion and apologizes to him, providing him with medicine to ease his pain. Confused to this dilemma, Akira plans to leave as quick as possible, as Psycho is mentally unstable. Yangare is willing to mutilate and harm Akira while the normal side of Psycho seems more compassionate and friendly, aiding Akira to heal his wounds, yet not willing to let him escape, being possessive. Psycho, having had lived a life in isolation, not understanding how normal real relationship progresses, she believes by kidnapping Akira she can induce a type of Stockholm Syndrome on him, making him fall back in love with her. However, this only terrifies Akira, who wants nothing more than getting away from her. Akira, finding it difficult to escape an ever-present psychotic psycho, tries another way to reason with her and gather all the pages of her diary scattered throughout the school. If Akira presents Psycho with her diary still missing some pages, she would assume that he had a hand in the stunt to publicly shame and humiliate her, which makes her become angry with her younger side taking over, going after Akira with murderous intents. But if Akira manages to collect all the missing pages, Psycho starts feeling bad and tells him the code to the locker where the key is locked in. There are several endings to this game, but this ending seems to be the most consistent with the latest nightmare mode in development acting as a sequel. After collecting the key, Psycho transforms into her younger self, chasing after Akira to execute him. However, Akira manages to leave the school, leaving Psycho behind, locking the main door on her. An enraged Psycho, not giving up so easily, smashes the door's window with her knife and proceeds to squeeze through when she trips and accidentally impales herself on the remaining shards of broken glass on the window frame. 
She starts bleeding rapidly, begging Akira for help. Akira in shock and denial to what he experienced this evening and what he's witnessing, runs with all the energy he has left, while Psycho seemingly bleeds to death. Following the painful events of what Akira went through, he develops severe PTSD which causes him to have vivid, visual and auditory hallucinations. Although Younger A mode is a bonus included within the game, it's said to contain a lot of canon elements which are to follow in the sequel mode called Nightmare. In the Young Grey mode, Akira finds himself yet again in the school at night time, this time being chased by two psychos. Her doppelganger being called Elisu, a demonic entity which alongside Psycho are invincible and immune to any damage, who are constantly in the Young Grey state, willing to savagely and brutally murder Akira. This is the nightmarish and over-exaggerated interpretation in form of hallucinations Akira is left with, perceiving Psycho to have been savage constantly and invincible with not a single moment of respite and calmness, which is contradicting to the truth. He also sees a demonic almighty doppelganger called Elisu, who assists Psycho in killing Akira, representing her alter ego. This is clearly the fear of Akira, remembering Psycho in such horrifyingly magnified scale. In all of the endings of Young Grey mode, Akira always ends up dying in brutal manners, including one which he believes he runs away, but is greeted by a Yandere state of Psycho, who embraces him, revealing her true demonic face when Akira is unaware. Yet again portraying Akira's interpretation that he could never truly escape. According to a short teaser shown by Habu Pain, the developer of Psycho, Nosotuka, the character of Psycho seen on the nightmare mode in the mode select menu, is impaled by numerous broken glass shards having an undead look to her. This confirms that Psycho died due to being impaled by broken glass pieces seen in the delusions of Akira, bleeding while having the broken pieces of glass still lodged in her body. I'm planning to make a subsequent video going over all of the current endings of this game, which you can stay tuned for by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell. It's been your host, R, and as always, have a fantastic day.